During the last week of October, the aggressor country Russia transferred more than 7,000 soldiers of the North Korean army from Primorsky Krai to areas near Ukraine, arming them with automatic weapons, sniper rifles and machine guns, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine reported. According to intelligence, North Korean troops were transported using at least 28 Russian military transport aircraft. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine reported that the Russians armed the DPRK soldiers in infantry fashion, they issued 60mm mortars, AK-12 assault rifles, Kalashnikov machine guns, SVD-SVCH sniper rifles, Phoenix ATGMs, and grenade launchers, RPG-7. Foreign troops were also provided with a few night vision devices, thermal imagers, collimator sights and binoculars. The main intelligence directorate added that training of DPRK military personnel is being carried out at five training grounds in the Russian Far East. Recall, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense announced that almost 11,000 North Korean soldiers are currently training in eastern Russia to fight against Ukraine. South Korean intelligence confirmed that the Russian Federation is preparing North Korean special forces for war in Ukraine. Then it became known that South Korea was considering sending its military to Ukraine in response to the DPRK's actions. Later, South Korea said it would send a delegation to Ukraine to discuss the issue of bringing in North Korean troops. NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta confirmed the involvement of North Korean troops in the war against Ukraine and their redeployment to the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. CNN, citing two Western intelligence officials, reported that a small group of North Korean troops was already in Ukraine. Officials expect that number to grow as the DPRK military completes its training in eastern Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that up to 8,000 North Korean troops had been deployed to the Russian Kursk region. President Volodymyr Zelensky once again reproached Western partners for just watching while Russia amasses foreign troops near Ukraine. North Korean troops, including soldiers from the elite 11th Army Corps, known as the Assault Corps, were sent to Russia last week, according to South Korean intelligence. As the Washington Post reports, North Korea's special forces are equipped with explosives, chemical and biological agents, parachutes and aircraft, although their gear is inferior to that of other countries, according to a 2021 report by the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency. The North Korean special forces number more than 200,000 in total. These elite units are trained for both potential attacks on South Korea and defense against external threats. They include ground, sea and air forces that operate in reconnaissance, sniper and sabotage groups. They are trained to capture key figures and carry out surprise attacks, according to the U.S. Department of Defense. These troops have been involved in some of North Korea's most famous operations, including the 1968 raid on Seoul, which resulted in casualties on both sides. The special forces are widely publicized in North Korean state media, where they are often portrayed as the strongest soldiers, sometimes with an emphasis on physical fitness. But despite their high level of training, these soldiers may struggle to adapt to modern warfare. As Hyuns Lee, a former soldier and human rights activist who served in the Stormtroopers, points out they lack the skills to handle advanced technology and modern equipment. If they end up on the front lines, they will have to contend with Ukrainian forces equipped with drones and missiles they have never encountered before. Lee added that for many of the soldiers sent to Russia, this would be their first encounter with combat and the outside world. He called them victims of a cruel deal between Kim Jong-un and Putin, noting that they would be facing real combat for the first time, ill-prepared and scared. Kim yol Su, a senior security expert at the Korea Institute of Defense Studies in Seoul, 
suggested that engineering and support units could also be sent to Russia to support the elite troops, including logistics, transportation and combat support. He noted that tens of thousands of troops require resources such as food, shelter, ammunition and communications. Despite their narrow specialization, North Korean special forces will likely assist in combat operations and learn from the Russian military, Kim added. A former Kremlin official who maintains ties to government circles said the deployment of North Korean troops to Kursk was an act of revenge for what the Kremlin sees as a threat to escalation. He also noted that it is cheaper and politically easier for the Kremlin to deploy North Korean troops as it gives the DPRK much needed resources and combat experience. Russia's resources in the war against Ukraine are being exhausted at a rapid pace and a geopolitical catastrophe awaits the country. Russian propagandist and Z patriot Maxim Kalashnikov made this statement. He assured that the Russian Federation does not have the resources for a long war. That is why the Kremlin is trying to persuade Ukraine to suspend military operations. It is clear that the initial goals of the special military operation are already unattainable. That's it. Opportunities have been missed. And now the goals of the special military operation seem to be changing. A demand has been made from Moscow, an end to the war, a ceasefire with the conclusion of a comprehensive security treaty with NATO, finally on Ukraine, and so on. Kalashnikov said. He complained that the Russian leadership lives in illusions and is leading Russia down the Soviet path of disintegration. Don't tell us that we can still wage war for years, that everything is reliable and stable. No, right now the RF's feet are hanging over nothing. They are on thin ice and below is an abyss, an abyss. Our leadership should understand this and if they don't, then it's a completely different story. What is beginning now, I feel like I am in an analogue of 1988 to 1991. A new geopolitical catastrophe is threatening, complained the Z propagandist. Putin's Russia, which has declared itself the successor state of the Soviet Union and said this was the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century, has every chance of repeating the fate of the Soviet Union. When in December 1979, an 80,000 Soviet army invaded Afghanistan, Things seemed to be going according to plan, but it soon became clear that capturing cities and several roads did not mean conquering the country. Armed resistance unfolded more and more. The whole country hated the occupiers and they responded accordingly, responded to the mass killings of civilians. Soviet aircraft and artillery wiped out towns and villages along with their inhabitants and shootings and torture took place at every turn. At least one million Afghans died during the Soviet intervention, but this did not break popular resistance. The free world was outraged by the barbaric Soviet attack on an independent state and the horrific crimes against Afghan citizens. The attitude towards the Soviet Union, already not very friendly, became openly hostile. 65 countries, including the United States, Canada, Germany, Japan and even China, boycotted the Summer Olympics in Moscow. The United States banned supplies of grain and machinery to the Soviet Union. Russia's war against Ukraine is in many ways similar to the Soviet war in Afghanistan, but there are many differences, and these differences do not favor the invaders. In that war, Ukrainians fought in the occupying army, and now they are defending their state from aggressors. Other former republics of the USSR, now independent states, are no longer fighting for Russia. Instead, Moscow uses primarily mobilized troops from Kalmykia, Buratia and Dagestan as their cannon fodder in Ukraine. 